Football is loved across all age groups across the country. But the physical demands of the game mean that senior citizens may not have the chance to play the conventional sport. Not really. There is the non-contact format of the sport known as walking football that is open to those aged 50 years and above. And Kenya has been registered to participate in the second edition of the Walking Football World Nations Cup scheduled for October 2025 in Spain. As a build-up to this event, the Kenya Walking Football Federation is taking the sport to the target demographic. We already know she can't play the ball over head high. The sport started, we started knowing or hearing about walking football in 2018, around there. So it was not official. Uh, even our African representative came here, was with people at City Stadium, and he, he introduced it, but nobody picked up. So later on, when we heard about it, by our general secretary, who is not here, Ian Aswani, he looked for me and he told me, I understand you have been in the sports for a long time and we want to set up a federation. What do we do? So I explained to them, with the, together with LAMEC, and we came up strongly see that we register this federation and move on. But the logistics, papers, do what, bring letters from the African Working Football Federation or Association, they get the world body and so on. And then these questions of lawyers coming in, so we, it took long, but we, this year we found ourselves having the certificates. We are making this journey to go to Spain so, because we missed the other World Cup narrowly because of registration. Now we are registered. We want to go out of our way to solicit for a corporate sponsorship and any other sponsorship under government so that we make sure we go places. Our aim is for the Kenyans to know that we are officially launched as Walking Football Federation. This Walking Football Federation is for the aged people. Men 50 and above, ladies 45 and above. It is also good for our health, especially when you retire. And in Kenya, you know so many people have not officially retired. They were retrenched. So it will help our health because we have been stressed, depressed, dramatized. But now when we go to walking football, we find keeping ourselves busy. So you relax and go and walk and exercise your body. There's nothing like stress, depression, and so on. As part of the path to develop the game, the local federation is partnering with schools and churches to get grounds where the sport can be played. Let's say in Nairobi, we have scouted like the Andorra, the Andorra Primary School, Don Home Primary School, and the... Our Lord of Mercy, Shaurimo Primary School. Uh, they have also said, since some of us know other games, like uh, um, our Lord of Mercy have said, instead of paying them, we cut grass ourselves, and then we coach those who know football, we coach their teams football. Those who know netball, we coach their teams. Those who know volleyball, we coach their teams. That's the way the, our Lady of Mercy have agreed with us. There are churches who are now ready uh, to start their... In fact, the PEFA, they have already started. Kaj, Apana, Buruburu, they have already started. Uh, Sitam, they have already started their aged people to train. Like Sitam, they have their own field. Kaj, they have their... PEFA, the ones who don't have their own field. And when they come in, now we shall make friendship with them so that we can use like sit and buruburu. Kenya has been registered for the World Nations Cup scheduled for October next year. To prepare for this event, a local league will run from February 2025. As part of the skills transfer program for the new sport in the country, the Walking Football Federation engaged the services of Ricky Weir, 
who serves as the Global Federation's ambassador for Africa. This is space clearly here, but you have to know that and you have to let them know. Okay? I was uh, appointed uh, ambassador back in 2019 when uh, the president of FIBA uh, recognized that I was already spending quite a bit of time in Africa anyway uh, on other projects, mainly with the youth. It is obviously a variation on football and at, at its basic level it still is football as people would recognize it, but there are some uh, key fundamental differences. Um, the most obvious one being it's walking football. Um, actually more correctly I should say it's not running football because there's a bit in between as well so not uh, running also or walking uh, also includes not skipping, jumping or hopping. Uh, so it truly is walking, uh, that's number one and obviously that needs to be officiated on because uh, you know there can be margins between slow running and fast walking and that's where you, you definitely need the, the officials who really have the experience to, to recognise that. The two clear aspects that uh, distinguish it for me as a player for, uh, and now currently uh, one of the international referees is not only the walking but the other aspect is it's zero contact zero contact and some referees especially even if they come from regular football um, maybe are too relaxed on that uh, and all of a sudden a small contact becomes a big contact because the principal concern and the rules that are in place are for people's health and safety and of course with uh, an aging population that is a target for walking football we are more prone to injury, okay? You know, a small clash like this with a foot on your, your calf could lead to a serious problem. It could lead to hospitalization uh, because that's how it is. We carry more problems when we're older. Um, the other aspect, uh, probably the third aspect, is there's no heading, uh, no heading of the ball. Again, uh, principally for health and safety aspect. Is there's two clear pathways on walking football. One is recreational, which is very much uh, maybe more relaxed. It's targeted to um, people that uh, from communities uh, that just want to get some exercise. But let's assume, okay, you're already, in, I've already told you so you're in but if this is happening real time, you're not ready. I can guarantee you. She might not technically make the pass, but at least she attempted to. But I'm in the right position. Okay, a position that she can clearly see. Walking, as we know, is, is a very healthy way of exercising. Uh, for many people, however, walking football is a more fun way to get exercise because they're playing a sport perhaps that they once played, uh, that they love, and here's an opportunity to come back and play. So that's, that's the, the first area, recreational, and that can have its own pathway. The second clear, distinct pathway is the competitive side. And that's really targeted uh, potentially for people like myself, ex-footballers, who maybe many years ago, because of the, the age and the limbs, stopped playing. And this is a, a, an opportunity to recharge, to, to recatalyze into football in a way that's uh, safe and, and healthy. Uh, but it also brings all those aspects that we once enjoyed in football, not only off, on the field, but off the field. So the camaraderie of, of, of maybe meeting and playing with and against former teammates. And one other massive aspect in the ageing population uh, that doesn't get talked about so much is loneliness. And here's an opportunity uh, through, for example, the Kenya Walking Football Federation. If they're having sessions in different locations, maybe once a week, it's an opportunity for people to come out and maybe re-engage into a community that currently they don't have. And we get to hear from new converts to the sport. It's a nice game. I've learned that it's a game of non-contact. And it's just walking. Walking football. You can't, uh, you can't run and it's for people like us who have played and retired. So if you want to find a place where you can play a sport that you enjoy, it's now football. Because rugby, it needs people who are young and talented. I'm 60 years old, and I have started this initiative at my local church, Pefadonum Church. Uh, it is a sport for people who are over 50, uh, and I'm hoping to use this for very many things, to build the community, to get the men out of the houses, to come out and bond and play and have fun. 
and network and basically just build our health at our age. With the help of uh, Kenya Working Football Federation, we are also hoping to build the sport in our residential areas and have a league so that we have a critical mass of teams participating in the sport so that as soon as possible we have a national league and then from that we will be able to select people that can represent this country at the next World Cup, which is next year in 2025 in Spain.